see. Okay. Hey, guys, how are you, man? Hopefully, by the grace and mercy of our God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, the internet connection will be strong. There'll be no buffering in Jesus' name. Lord, for your glory, bless this session. Yeah, all the Father, so Spirit. Another late night session for me. Alan, what's up, my brother? Last night, I had a late night session with William Albrecht on the canon. Alan, what did you think of that discussion? Many of you were not aware of it, were you? Lord Jesus willing, I'll go back to my regular time of live streaming. Uh, I decided to do one today at this time because I was busy pretty much. I was busy yesterday, so I couldn't do a live stream. So I ended up doing a late, late night live stream with at William Albrecht. I'll give you the link. It was 10 p.m. local time, which was... 1 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So we had a late night session, 1 a.m. on the canon of the Holy Bible, the canon of the Holy Scriptures. William Albrecht is a Roman Catholic apologist. <clears throat> and so <clears throat> we had a discussion on that issue. I wouldn't mind having a discussion with an Orthodox Christian to get their viewpoint as well. You didn't see it? Let me get you the link. Hold on. And I'm going to ask the Lord Jesus to pray and bless us that the Lord Jesus will crucify my flesh and save me from stumbling, save me from Satan, save us from distractions of the enemy as the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ shields us and washes us and cleanses us. And the Holy Spirit sanctifies us for the glory of Jesus Christ. We love you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Let me get the link. I got a lot of articles for you guys tonight. A lot of articles. So let's just hold on. Reason and theology. Oh, Father, Son, Spirit. Here it is. Here's the link. It was late last night. So tonight, I know it's very late for many people. Thank you, first and last. I know it's very late for many people. Here it is again. First and last post it. It's very late. Thank you, guys. Uh, thank you for posting it. I'm posting it as well. How you doing, David? Yeah. God bless you. So for the people in the U.S., very late. For some people, it's 1 in the morning. Some people, it's midnight. But I think in Europe, what is it, 6, 7 in the morning? Uh, my God, my goodness. Hey guys, can you help me understand? What's the title of the discussion? See again, Satan starts. Satan starts with the attacks and the distractions using his children or using even innocent Christians who love Jesus Christ are gullible and use of the devil. You can be a Christian who loves Jesus and be used of the devil without you being aware of it. And obviously you don't want to be used of the devil or a child of Satan being used of the devil to distract. But may the Lord Jesus Christ crucify my flesh, mortify my flesh, and give me perfect self-control to overcome my flesh for the glory of Jesus Christ and be filled with the Spirit. So now you guys saw what the title is, right? Son of God in the Hebrew Bible, not Hebrews. No, no, not Hebrews, Roman Catholic. So can you explain to me why this person comes to my channel? 3K and asks me about a Bible discrepancy, a discrepancy between Ezra and Nehemiah. Can you explain? Help me understand how people think. Remember, yeah, Adam Shifa, there goes the there goes the buffering. I'm hoping it won't buffer. Please, Father, please, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit. Usually the connection is perfect here. If it buffers badly, folks, I'm gonna go and connect to the router modem. I'm not connected to the router motor. Usually it doesn't buffer. Please, Lord, I pray stays. Strong. If not, then I'm gonna have to reconnect to the router modem. Hopefully not. Yeah, then she. Okay, folks, help me understand. Can you help me understand? If there's a topic, son of God, why does 3K come in here and ask me a question not related to the topic? It was buffering for me, Razzle. Thank you, Razzle, for that compliment. God bless you, brother. Can you help me understand? Because remember, I wasn't born yesterday. I was born the day before. Okay. So I'm not the sharpest tool tool in the shed, you know, that expression. So help me understand, Razzle. If I'm if the title is Son of God in the Hebrew Bible, why don't you ask me about what color my mother's hair was, 
what color was her eyes, how much did she weigh, how long was she married, how many kids. Ask me about, you know, my social security and how much money I have in the account, things not related to the topic. Can someone help me? I just want to know, honestly, right? Yeah, 3K, that's what happens when you get for thinking. That means you're not thinking. You're being disrespectful and rude because you see what the title is, right, 3K? So you have no respect for me or the people or the topic because it's about your agenda. What do you want me to tell you? Ah, oh, we're starting again. Yeah, I'll put false our spirit. Yeah, we're going to talk about Zeus, Tippy Bear. We're going to talk about Hermes and Diana, everything but the topic. Okay, guys, focus, guys. Let's focus. I just want to give you guys a few minutes. So 3K, my friend. You know what the one of the rules are, right, in my, in my YouTube channel? So that people don't cause me to stumble in sin and I don't become a stumbling block to others. 3K, you know what it is, right? It's don't pontificate and don't tell me how to run my YouTube channel. Now, this is the second strike, second disrespectful and stupid comment you said to me. So 3K, can I ask you, why are you here? In all honesty, why are you here? Why are you distracting me and causing me to stumble so I can cause my brothers and sisters to stumble? Why are you here? Especially late night. Right? I'm just curious. Why are you here? Sorry, folks. You see, I knew it. I know we're going to get attacked by Satan. Yeah. All right, folks. Please, my God. I don't want to be distracted. I already had a mental shutdown, meltdown on Friday, and I had to cancel that session. I hope it doesn't happen today. Guys, I hope not. Please, guys. See, he did it again, guys. He did it again. I'm wondering why do I teach? I'm not, I'm not cut for this. I really am not. I really, uh, the more I do this, the more I realize I'm not cut out for this, man. I can't do it. <sighs> Lord, have mercy on us, Father. Lord Jesus, have mercy on us. Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Yeah. One thing I can tell you guys, the one thing I can tell you is that the older I get, the more impatient I become, the more angry I am. I thought as I grew older, by the grace of God's Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, He would set me free from my flesh and my imperfections, and by His grace and power, enable me to become more patient, less angry. Now, everything imperfect and sinful is from us, not from the Holy Spirit. Anything good we do in the sight of God is the work of the Holy Spirit, the work of His grace, and by His power, transforming us to become like the Lord Jesus Christ. So the Holy Spirit has been pleased in His perfect wisdom and will, because He is perfect, He is almighty, He's all-knowing. He's been pleased to allow me to struggle with my flesh. And He has a purpose. The purpose may be to teach me that I am absolutely wicked, sinful, carnal, and worthless apart from Jesus Christ. And I deserve hell unless Jesus Christ, by his grace, saves me and cleanses me by his precious blood. That may be the reason. Because the more I see my imperfections and my weaknesses and my carnal struggles, the more I realize, man, I am rotten and no good and pathetic and I truly deserve God's wrath if Jesus doesn't save me by the blood of his cross and seals me by his Holy Spirit. Seriously, honestly, I'm being honest. I am, man, let me just take a moment to glorify Jesus Christ and give him all glory and praise and love that he deserves. Man, I am a wicked wretch who deserves help. If you guys really think you're good and you really think you deserve blessings, then you do not know how pure and holy and righteous and just God is and how wretched and wicked and sinful you are in comparison and why it has to be the grace and the mercy and the love and the compassion and pity of our God for us to be saved. Otherwise, we deserve help. Honestly. You know, the Bible talks about the law being a mirror. The more you look at the law, of liberty, the, the mirror, I should say, the mirror of the law of liberty. And the more you see in the mirror 
clearly, the more you see your perfections, your grotesqueness, and why you desperately need the Holy Spirit to change you and wash you and purify you and conform you to the image of Jesus Christ. Honestly, the closer you walk to God, I'm not saying I wa I'm walking close. Lord, forgive me if I'm if I come out saying that and being arrogant enough to say that I'm walking closer. To the, I pray I walk more closely to become more like Jesus. But the more you look into the God's word, the more you see how wretched and despicable and disgusting you are. And if you don't believe it, look around you. What's happening in America? The looting, the rioting, the destruction of property, the destruction of human lives, right? The corrupt, corrupt, wicked, evil, judicial, legal system, how corrupt and evil and wicked even policemen are, wicked and hate and venom, right? Look around you. And because of this, burning cop cars, burning down buildings, police stations and, and stores, right? And, and looting property. And, and right now I just saw a video. I just saw a video that really angered me with rage and broke my heart. A wicked, filthy thug, worse than a filthy dog, walks into a place, throws gasoline, on a white woman, I believe it was a white woman, if I recall it said a white woman, and lit her on fire. And now because of this madness, this chaos, we have curfews now, right? Where I'm at, our curfew is at 8 p.m. And you actually think, apart from Jesus Christ, be honest with yourselves, apart from Jesus Christ, apart from the pity and mercy and compassion of God, apart from the Holy Spirit, human beings, after the fall of Adam and Eve, Corrupted and tainted by sin and Satan. We're good. We are filthy, dirty scum of the earth. Unless and until the Holy Spirit changes us, washes us in the blood of Jesus, and conforms us to the image of Christ. Right? Look around you, and mankind is proof. The Bible is 100% accurate. 100% accurate. Because it's the word of God, and God is almighty. He is truth, and he sees creation as it is and he sees the corruption depravity of man and he doesn't sugarcoat it and he reveals man for what he is apart from the holy spirit regenerating man honestly if these current events have not convinced you how real the bible is how accurate the bible is in <clears throat> describing the human condition and plight then you are blind by Satan. honestly what you see around you should strengthen your confidence in the Bible. Truly, this is the word of the creator, God Almighty, and the creator exists because this book perfectly describes the depravity and filth of man who is not born of the Holy Spirit. Honestly, you got to be blind if you don't see it. If you don't see it. So may the Father beatify me for the glory of Jesus Christ. May the Lord Jesus sanctify me by his spirit for his glory. May the Holy Spirit fill me. For the glory of Jesus and bless you. We love you, Father. We love you, Son of God. We love you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, apart from you, I cannot overcome my imperfections, my flesh, and my carnal desires. Holy Spirit, every one of us, I pray in behalf of every one of us, we need you desperately because without you, we cannot live the Christian life. We cannot love Jesus, and we are corrupt and filthy and depraved. Please, Holy Spirit, please. Save us from our corrupt human condition. Save us from our sinful passion. Save us from the influence of Satan and his kingdom. Holy Spirit, crucify my flesh. Destroy my unrighteous anger, please, for the glory of Jesus Christ. Do not allow us, do not allow me to shame Jesus Christ, to blaspheme the name of Jesus Christ, to insult the name of Jesus Christ. Save me from my own pitiful, wicked, filthy flesh. Mortify our flesh, my flesh. Destroy the fruits of our flesh. Save me from unrighteous anger, impatience. Please, Holy Spirit, bless everyone here. They're not here to hear me rant or to stumble and sin. They're here because they're seeking you, Holy Spirit, to use imperfect sinners like me to speak for the glory of Jesus Christ, to speak about the glory of Jesus Christ, to magnify the Lord Jesus. Please, Holy Spirit, cause Jesus to increase in us. May we decrease and wash us in the blood of Jesus Christ.
purify us in the blood of Jesus Christ, the blood of the Lamb. And Holy Spirit, help me not to be a distraction to my neighbors. It's late. Help me to bless them. They see Jesus in me, and I shine with the beauty of Jesus Christ to win them to the glory of Jesus Christ. Take over the session, Holy Spirit. Anoint me to speak clearly without error. Enable me to recall the passages perfectly. Interpret them correctly. Loosen my tongue. Bless the sound of my voice to be pleasing to the ears of your servants who are gathered, Holy Spirit, and those who will listen later on. Help me not to be a stumbling block to them, Holy Spirit. Please fill us with passion and love and faithfulness and holiness and purity and devotion to our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. And please destroy the distractions of Satan and his children and even save Christians who are born from you, who are united to Jesus Christ, from being used in their innocence and gullibility of the devil to cause their brothers to stumble. stumble. Save us from being used of the devil unbeknownst to us and fill us with your life and your power and your fruit and your passion for Jesus Christ, the Father's heart. Please, Holy Spirit, please, I'm begging you. We seek your face, and we need you and depend on you. We love you, Holy Spirit. Father, we love you. Bobby, we love you. Lord Jesus, we love you. Though we love you imperfectly, perfect our love for you and our trust in you. We plead the blood of your cross, Lord Jesus, to cover us and our loved ones and my daughters. Wash them and cover them, Lord Jesus, and save them and save us. To not shame you, but to glorify you. In Jesus' almighty name, Yahweh, Father, Son, and Spirit. Yahweh, Father, Son, and Spirit. Guys, again. Sorry, it's late night. I won't be doing this regularly. I won't be coming on late, right? That's the reason why I'm doing it late tonight is because I was busy for the most most part. I couldn't even sleep. I couldn't sleep till four in the morning. I don't know why I was up. And then I had things to do and I needed to rest and be refreshed. And also I didn't want to do a live stream while Al Fadi was doing a live stream. Our precious brother in Jesus Christ, he had a live stream with a former Muslim who became Christian, someone who was raised in a Christian background, who then became Muslim, but by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, left Islam and returned to the feet of Jesus Christ. So I didn't want to live stream when he was live streaming. So again, Lord Jesus willing, pray for me. I want to get on a set schedule. If I can, at least once a day, and the time I'm looking at is between 3 and 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Because that time is perfect even for Europe. It's not too late. They can join me. Pray for more people, genuine, sincere people who genuinely want to learn and, and fall in love with Jesus Christ as the Spirit uses me to glorify Jesus Christ, that I too fall more in love with Jesus Christ and not be a hypocrite. Save me from my hypocrisy. So between 3 to 4 p.m. So Lord willing, I'm going to do a session again tomorrow. Yeah, uh, yeah, I gotta see. Because tomorrow, guys, I'm doing a live stream with Al Fadi. Sierra International Al Fadi. I'm gonna be joining Al Fadi, Lord Jesus willing, if the Trine God wills and permits. I'm going to be doing a live stream for Al Fadi, God willing, Sierra International, around what time you say, three o'clock? That would be six p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I'm gonna be doing the six p.m. Eastern Standard Time live stream with Al Fadi if the Lord wills. So I may go before or after that session. But I notify people when I go live on my YouTube channel on Facebook. So if you're not my Facebook friend, look for me, Sam Shamoon. And I have another account, Ben Malik, B-E-N, Ben and Malik, M-A-L-I-K, Sam Shamoon, Ben Malik. And I put notifications. And God willing, I'm going to learn how to schedule my live streams a day in advance. So God willing, I'll learn to do that by the grace and mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, tomorrow, God willing, I'm going to do the final part on Hebrews 1, Jesus and angelic creatures. I have to finish that series, and if the Lord permits, I finish it tomorrow by the grace of Jesus Christ. Today, I'm going to talk about a different topic, though related, but I have a lot of articles to give you. Are you guys ready for the articles? And thank the mods for helping me to help you. They'll come back and put the links to the articles in the description box. But are you ready for the articles? There are a lot. In fact, this session was inspired by Instigator. I think he's here. Instigator, are you here? Sorry, it's late. This is the best lighting that I have. And I have decided to wear my Bruce Lee shirt. And the lighting just blinded me. Yeah. Instigator, are you here? Or did you take off because you like to instigate? Do a hit and run. 
Yeah. Does he hear you left? Oh, indicator. Was it indicator or instigator? Why am I calling you instigator? Is that prophetic? Am I am I prophesying that you're more of an instigator than an indicator? You asked me about Proverbs chapter 30, verse 4, right? You're the one who asked me about Proverbs 30, verse 4 in the comment section. Yeah, I'm like, I, I kept thinking instigator. What a lively, lovely name. It fits, but it's indicator. You sure you weren't the one who asked me? So what's wrong with me today? Anyway, guys, someone asked me about Proverbs 30, verse 4. Chapter 30, verse 4. Here are the articles. I have too many articles to give you. If you can't keep up, that's not my fault. Okay, here it goes. Oh, yeah, you're the sinner that almost caused me to stumble, and I wanted to come looking for you, lay hands on you, like the other brother said. Here's Article 1, Proverbs 30, verse 4. Proverbs 30, verse 4. You ready for the first article? Okay. This is the first article. Study these materials. Learn the arguments. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you to understand the arguments until it becomes second nature so that you have a responsibility to teach them to others to strengthen the body of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. So don't just take these articles and not read them. Remember, I'm not trying to scare you, but I'm going to share some with you before I give you the rest. The more blessings you receive, the more graces bestowed on you, the greater your judgment, the greater responsibility. Okay? So don't take it as a joke, folks. Right? And it's also an insult to the human teachers that God raises to teach you that when they teach you something, you don't learn the material, make it second nature, and don't apply it to glorify Jesus Christ. Because whether you like it or not, you need to be preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. You need to be reaching to the lost and win them to Jesus Christ. And then catechize them, disciple them disciple them to know the faith so let me let me repeat it again let me repeat it again the more blessings you receive the more graces bestowed on you the greater your judgment and responsibility before before god do you know that so every time i give you articles and instead of reading them you just ignore them and you wonder why you don't know the faith or understand the depth of Scripture and don't get these points. You have no one but yourself to blame, and the Lord will hold you and me accountable. The Lord Jesus will judge the body, the spiritual members of his body, the church of Jesus Christ. He will judge them for what they have done or what they have not done with the graces and the knowledge and the blessings he's bestowed on them to use those graces and blessings to glorify Jesus Christ, preach his gospel, make him known, and to live for his glory. Okay? So that's the first article. So, guys, don't take this as a joke. When I give you articles, it's for your edification and blessing so you understand the depth of Scripture, be assured of the authority of Scripture, the beauty of Scripture, the inspiration of Scripture, the accuracy of Scripture, and trust in the God of Scripture— and love that God according to his will, and teach others. I'm getting tired of repeating myself. I'll be honest with you. I am getting tired of repeating myself because I had a mental shutdown, meltdown Friday because the people were not getting the angel of the Lord. And that discouraged me and hurt me and disappointed me because I have spent Years talking about the angel Lord. I have YouTube talks, sessions on my YouTube channel on the angel Lord and articles on the angel Lord so that many people who were not able to answer should have been able to answer because they know the stuff and they, they still they couldn't. <sighs> Lord Jesus, have mercy on us. Holy Spirit, refresh us and save us from our flesh and from Satan and the influence of the world. Here's the second article. Here's the second article. Are you ready? Here it is. I have a lot of articles to give you before I begin. Yeah, Razzle, I had a mental shutdown, breakdown, meltdown, because I couldn't focus anymore. I went blank because it was so embarrassingly bad that just the basic understanding of the angel Lord went over people's heads. People who should have known better because I keep telling them, go back, listen to the sessions. And I just said I couldn't think. So pray God refreshes me because as I'm thinking about it, I'm shutting down again. 
Lord Jesus, pre preserve me. Holy Spirit, seal me. Rebuke Satan from China, scourge me. In Jesus' name, for the glory of Jesus Christ. Here is the second article. Okay, that's the second article. Yeah, that should help me there. Here is the third article. This is all on Proverbs chapter 30, verse 4. Chapter, chapter 30, verse 4 of Proverbs. Here is the third article. Okay. If you've gotten those articles, let me see. Okay. Let me see something. Yeah. Before I move on. Okay, well, I'll stop with that for now. Let me stop at that. We're going to unpack Proverbs 30. And then when we go to Daniel, I'll give you the articles for Daniel. I'll give you the articles for Daniel when we segue into Daniel, if the Lord Jesus wills, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Guys, pray that God keeps you focused. Pray against attacks of the devil. Pray the Lord Jesus will refresh me to be anointed to speak truth clearly. For the glory of Jesus Christ, in Jesus' name, we love you, Father, Son, and Spirit. Okay, let's now begin. Why am I doing this talk? Okay, when we segue into Daniel... Not chapter 7. I did say chapter 7. Yes, Daniel chapter 7 will be part of this discussion. But it will be specifically Daniel 3. Daniel 7 will come up in my exposition of Daniel 3. And why Bible translations matter. Provided the Lord Jesus wants me to talk about the subject. And then refreshes me and anoints me to do so. Folks, if you wonder why I keep praying. It's not a show. I'm not putting on a facade. We truly need the Holy Spirit to fill us, anoint us, empower us, sanctify us, preserve us for the glory of Jesus Christ. We truly need to be seeking the Holy Spirit. Please, Holy Spirit, save me from my flesh. Please, Holy Spirit, crucify my flesh. Empower me against my flesh. Please, Holy Spirit, refresh me for the glory of Jesus. Please, Holy Spirit, show me what these passages mean and enable me to live it out. You have to be in constant prayer. Exactly. Nicholas, you took the words out of my mouth. Praying without ceasing. Seeking the Holy Spirit and his protection. So that's why you keep seeing me say that. Because I'm aware that apart from the Holy Spirit, if the Holy Spirit lets me go, I'm a wicked, filthy, vile, corrupt dog. Filthier than a dog if the Holy Spirit doesn't save me from myself. And that's the honest to God truth. I'm not lying to you. Okay? Thank you, Razzle. Everything good is from the Holy Spirit. So... As we segue into Daniel chapter 3 and 7, I'll give you the links. Now, why am I talking about the Son of God in the Hebrew Bible? People often ask, where do you find the Son of God mentioned in the Hebrew Bible? And by Son of God, I'm talking about Jesus Christ as the eternal Son of God, the eternal Word of God who existed before creation, who existed with the Father and the Spirit, before creation and eternity, because we believe Jesus Christ has eternally existed, not as a man. Jesus hasn't always been a man. Now, I know, I know I'm preaching to the choir, but I just want to re reiterate this. Jesus Christ has not always existed as a man. Okay? He became man at a specific point in time when he humbled himself to enter the blessed, sanctified, holy womb of that blessed, beautiful Jewish virgin maiden, Mary, who conceived the physical body, human nature of our Lord Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit as a virgin, no man touching that blessed womb, that blessed body. That's when he became human, conceived in her womb, born from her blessed womb. And you better believe it's blessed. If you guys don't like me saying it, there's something wrong with you. Oh, you sound too Catholic. No, I sound biblical. I sound biblical. The Holy Spirit sanctified that holy womb of that virgin whom no man touched physically so that her womb could be consecrated and worthy enough to carry the eternal Son of God who is of infinite worth and value and holiness. Okay. I'm being biblical because I know a lot of people think, Sam, you're, you're making too many confessions, man. Are you going to cross the Tiber? What's happening to you, bro? I'm trying to be as honest to Scripture as possible, trusting the Spirit to guide me for the glory of Jesus Christ. That's when he became human. And so from that moment on, Jesus became man and continues to be man 
and will rem remain human forever and ever. Prior to him becoming human, the Bible clearly teaches, contrary to what these heretics and sons of Satan, agents of the devil, would have you believe, he exists as an eternal divine person. Meaning, before creation came into being, this person whom we now know as Jesus of Nazareth exists eternally. He's an uncreated person who exists eternally with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Okay, now, with that said, people ask me, where do you find this Son of God in the Hebrew Scriptures? Now, let me, you guys got to be listening. You got to be listening if you want to learn. Because you want meat here, right? So I'm going to try to give you meat by the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay. If you have gone and listened to those sessions that I've told you to listen to, and if you've listened to Anthony Rogers, another brother you need to listen to, okay? And if you've read the articles that I've given you, we have demonstrated that Jesus appears all over the Hebrew Bible. We have demonstrated that Jesus appears all over the Hebrew Bible. He appears as the angel of the Lord. This is why I got frustrated and I shut down Friday when people were not getting it. May the Lord Jesus save me from that meltdown. He appears as the angel of the Lord, and I explained already. Please don't make me explain it again because the angel of the Lord is going to come up in Daniel. Please get it. Please go back, listen, go study. Please get it. Get it for the glory. He's worthy. Jesus is worthy. We understand these things for his glory and be convinced of them so we can teach others and silence these blasphemous, wicked dogs of the devil who want to rob Jesus of his glory. Please get it. Please understand. The angel is not a creature. This angel of God is not a creature. He's a messenger sent by God who happens to be God Almighty, claims to be God, does things that only God can do, and is worshipped as God. Please get that point. Please. It's going to come up when I talk about Hebrews 1 again tomorrow, God willing. He also appears as the word of the Lord. There are places in did someone just insult me and tell me that Jesus is Michael the Archangel? I think Ramon wants me to get him out of here, right? Ramon, you don't need you need to go, right? You need to get out of here. Okay. All right. Now, focus, focus. Jesus Christ also appears as the word of the Lord. In the Hebrew Bible, listen guys, pay attention. Don't let Satan distract you, please, and ask the Lord to stop me from being distracted. Samson, you need to go too, my friend. Uh, send Samson out here too. Bye-bye, Samson. Today's the day we're going to get rid of people. We're not going to tolerate. Sorry, I'm going to go back to my old me. Okay. Focus for the glory of Jesus Christ. Focus here. There is a figure that often appears in the Old Testament called the Word of the Lord. This Word of the Lord, pay attention. Pay attention. This Word of the Lord is not simply God's audible voice that you hear. Nor is it simply God's commandments, right? Nor is it simply the written revelation of God. This word of the Lord is a person distinct from God, sent by God to communicate God's words to his servants and happens to be God. He's none other than the angel of the Lord. I've done sessions on these. I've given proof of it. I can give you some examples if you want. I can give you some examples. Do you want me to give you some examples that the word of the Lord is not simply the audible voice of God you hear? It can mean that. Can mean that. Or God's commands. Can mean that. Or God's written revelation. Can mean that. But it's actually a person who speaks and is spoken to, sent by God, who claims to be God, and others realize he's God. Okay. And guys, I'm going to do it now. I've done sessions on this. Anthony Rogers has done sessions on this. Even Michael Heiser has done sessions on this. Even Michael Brown. Please listen to these sessions. Because the goal of these classes, guys, the goal of these classes is that you can learn your faith, learn these truths, make it second nature so you can teach. Guys, I want you to be teachers of the word. Teach those things that you're assured of and you know and understand by the power of the Spirit for the glory of Christ. Honestly. I want you. That's my heart. I want to see you guys teach. 
I want to see the Holy Spirit give you the grace to be spiritually mature and teach. Teach. Teach for the glory of Christ. Christ said, preach and make disciples of all nations. But you need to know your faith. You need to know what the Bible teaches so you don't misrepresent it, misinterpret it. And you have to have godly counsel and authorities watching over your souls to make sure you don't exceed the limit of Scripture. Okay? Now, let me show you now. You ready? Where does the word of the Lord appear as a person? Jeremiah 1, Jeremiah 1, verses 4 to 10. Pray for my sight because already my sight is bad and the light's killing me. Jeremiah 1, verses 4 to 10. Guys, if you're not reading these passages, you're not going to make the connection. Then the word of the Lord came unto me saying, then the word of the Lord came unto me saying, then the word of the Lord came unto me saying, you see, I sound like a broken record. Why do you think I keep repeating it? Let's try it again. Then the word of the Lord came unto me saying, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then the word of the Lord came to me unto me saying, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Who didn't catch it? By the way, first last for this, I want you to go to the New King James Version. I want you to switch to the King James, New King James Version. You'll see why in a minute, if you can. Anybody catch it? Who caught it? So you got it, George. I have to say you got it, my precious sister. Why would you want to contact me, Brian? Who said I want you to contact me? Who came to Jeremiah and spoke to him? Jeremiah 1, verses 4 and 5. One more time. Jeremiah 1, verses 4 and 5. Watch here. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Wow. I don't know if you caught it. Jeremiah says, The word came to me and spoke to me. And the word told me, he's my creator. He created me. He made me in my mother's womb. And he made me in my mother's womb to be his prophet, to speak on his behalf. Okay, Brian, I didn't know you were saying. We'll talk later, brother. We'll talk later. That's easy. Just focus. Even though your last name is Rodriguez, I don't know how you end up being a Syrian with a Hispanic last name. That's a mystery. Anyway. You got it now? The word of the Lord came to me saying, and what did he say in verse 5? Let's look at it again because we've got to go slow. All right. I'm going to show you something. So you don't think I'm making it up because you guys know I'm a liar. I'm a liar. Unless the Holy Spirit saves me from my lies to speak truth for the glory of Jesus. Okay, here. So you understand. Here you go. I'm going to give you, thank God for modern technology. Thank God for modern technology. Where everything is a fingertip away and it's free. Okay, now watch here. Watch here. Click here and see. You don't need, even need to read the Hebrew because they provide the Hebrew in transliteration. If you read just the translation, it says, well, you go, Wehi, Davar, Davar, or Davar, Yod, He, Vav, He, Yahovah, Ille, Ille, Yani, Ille, for those of you who speak a certain Ille, Lamer, saying, Lamer, saying. The word came to me saying. Do you see that word, Lamer? Lamor, Lamer, Illi. See those of you who speak Assyrian? It's Mara. Illi Mirre. You guys see that? You catch it? Who came speaking? Right there. Click on it, folks. Don't take my word for it. Don't trust me. Trust the word of God. It's Hebrew. But it's close because remember, Aramaic, Hebrew, Arabic are cognate languages, right? And modern Hebrew comes from our language, George. You know this. Okay. Elle, Elle, Lamer. He said. 
Everyone got it? Everyone got that? Do you see the word speaks? So who said in verse 5 to Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, right? And I consecrated and set you apart to be a prophet. Who said that to Jeremiah? Who told Jeremiah, I created you in the womb? I'm your creator. I made you in the womb. What does the verse say? Jeremiah 1.4. No, stick with the language of the verse. Just give me the language of the verse. The word of the Lord, right? You caught it? Okay. Now let's read 6 to 10. 6 to 10. So you see the word of the Lord speaks. 6 to 10. This is Old Testament. This is not New Testament. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, Adonai, Yehovah, O Sovereign Jehovah, Behold, I cannot speak, for I am a youth. But the Lord said to me, so now notice, the word of the Lord who speaks is the Lord who speaks. The word speaks, God speaks. The Lord said to me, the Lord said to me, do not say I am a youth, for you shall go to all whom I send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord Jehovah. So when the word speaks, Jehovah speaks. Now watch here. Here's where it gets beautiful. Verse 9. Oh, my goodness. Jeremiah 1, nine. Then the Lord Jehovah put forth his hand and touched my mouth. The Lord has a hand, and Jeremiah sees the hand of the Lord, the visible hand of the Lord, reach out and touch his mouth. The Lord touched, reached out his hand, put forth his hand, touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations, over the nations, and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy, and to throw down, to build, and to plant. Oh, my goodness. There it goes, verse 9. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. God has a hand, a visible hand, that is so tangible it can actually touch and you can feel it. And Jeremiah sees the Lord stretch out his hand and physically touch his mouth. And go, that symbolizes I'm putting my words in your mouth. Oh, my goodness. And who was that Lord Jehovah that appeared in visible form, that appeared in human form with a visible hand that he physically felt touching his mouth? Jeremiah 1, 4, the word. The word. This echoes John 1, 1, 3, right? This echoes John 1, verses 1, 3. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God, so the word of God. The word was God, so he's of God and God. So word of the Lord is of the Lord, and he is the Lord. All things came into being through him. That's what the word just said. I made you. I created you in the womb. Well, that's what John 1, 3 says the word did. The word brought all creation into being, into existence. He created all things. Exactly what the word told Jeremiah. My goodness. The memra, exactly. Okay, now. Zechariah 4, verses 8 to 9. I'm going to give you a few examples of the word. Zechariah 4, verses 8 to 9. Yes, Jesus was talking to Jeremiah before he became flesh. That's the point. But guys, pay attention to these verses. Zechariah 4, verses 8 to 9. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, there he goes again. The word of the Lord came to me saying, there's that word again, showing up again, saying again. The word of the Lord came to me saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple. His hand shall also finish it. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. Oh, my goodness. Mind blown. Zechariah 4, verses 8 to 9. Mind blown. Zechariah 4, verses 8 to 9. One more time, because it's going too fast. You're not catching up with me. You got to catch up with me. Zechariah 4, verse 8 to 9. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple. His hand shall also finish it. So when he does what I tell you, then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. Sent who to who? Then when these words of mine are fulfilled, you will realize the Lord of hosts, Jehovah, has sent me to speak to you. Who sent who? Who sent who? 
What? Ralph, your mother is a joke for giving birth to a filthy rabid dog like you that will get muzzled and is only a man behind the screen. Your poor mother. She didn't know she was going to give birth to an animal. Did you guys catch it? Zechariah 4, verse 8 to 9. The word says Zerubbabel will do this, Zechariah. When he does what I say, then you will know the Lord of hosts sent me to you. So rest assured, don't doubt, you're not hallucinating. So the Lord of hosts sent the word to speak to Jeremiah. That's what you just read. Jehovah of hosts sent the word saying, word, go and speak to Jeremiah and tell him what will happen in the future. So the word is sent by Jehovah to announce to Zechariah the future. Zerubbabel will lay the foundation and temple. And then Zechariah, when it happens, rest assured, the Lord sent me to speak to you. Oh, my goodness. Let's see. Hold on. Because you guys are all skeptics, you know. Let me show you something. Let me show you. Here it is, the Hebrew again. The Hebrew again. Watch here. Can you guys show, go there and tell me if the word... Lamer is there, the word of the Lord, Lamer. Yes, right, Zina, but that's why God answered your prayer. He brought you to a place where you will find this revelation. Okay, wait. Click on it, guys. Here's the interlinear Hebrew. Does it say Lamer saying so that the word is speaking? So the word speaks? And the word speaks face to face with others? And the word appears in human form? Oh, my goodness gracious. I'm going to give you a few more examples, if you're okay. Are you up for this? Are you tired? You're ready to go to sleep. Exactly, Luisa. But, folks, you know where you're going to discourage me? Here, guys. Here's where I'm going to get discouraged. After I give you these evidences and arguments, and you still don't make it second nature, Absorb this information until it becomes part of your DNA etched in your spirit. So now you can share it with others. If you can't do that, you're going to break my heart. You're going to break my heart. Because I'm going to feel like I'm wasting my time. And I don't want to feel that. I want you to learn your faith. I want you to know your faith. I want you to proclaim your faith. I want you to love your faith. I want you to live your faith by the power of the spirit. And I pray that for myself so I don't be a hypocrite. And die for the faith. Please, guys. Please use it. Please start YouTube channels. Upload my videos if you want. Take clips of them. Upload my articles to your... Print them out, please. I'm telling you, please. For the glory of Jesus. Our Lord is worthy. He's infinitely beautiful. He's done everything for us that we don't deserve. He's worthy. We go that extra mile to know this stuff and share it so that people like you will be blown away. You know why people turn away from the Bible? Because they don't know this stuff. You show them this stuff, they're going to be blown away. My goodness, this book is supernatural. It has to be inspired. And the God of this book must be alive. But they don't know it. And so they walk away thinking it's a book of fairy tales. Please, guys. Please. If you love me for the sake of Jesus, and because you love Jesus, forget me, learn this stuff, please. Please learn it. 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 9 to 13. 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 9 to 13. Amen, Louisa. May God make your children holy arrows, destroying the kingdom of darkness. Guys, pay attention here. Here's where you really need to pay attention. Be blown away, guys. Be blown away. Please listen. First Kings chapter 19, verses 9 to 13. And there he went into a cave and spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said to him, what? The word of the Lord came to Elijah while he was in a cave. And he said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? So he said, I have been very zealous. I have been very zealous. Hmm. For the Lord of God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, tore down your altars. He's talking to the word. So it's the covenant of the word. It's the altars built for the word. 
And the prophets are the prophets of the word. The word made them prophets. Killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. Then he said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. Okay, so he, was, he wasn't in the wind. He didn't appear in the wind. He heard a wind, but he wasn't in the wind. He didn't manifest in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. So where was the Lord? Guys, 12 and 13, read. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. So it was when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. Suddenly a voice came to him and said, what are you doing here, Elijah? Oh, wow. God was in the voice. He was in the word. The word is where you're going to find God. Oh, my goodness. I don't think you got it. The word, the voice. The voice, the word. The word is the voice. The voice is the word. So you know where you're going to find God? Not in the earthquake. Not in these shattering miracles. Not in these earth-shattering miracles. No, no, no. You're going to find God in the word, in his voice, Jesus Christ. Wow. Here, so you guys get it. That's, I don't think you got it. 1 Kings 19, verse 9, and 12 to 13. We're going to put 1 Kings 19, verse 9, and 12 to 13. We're going to skip 10 and 11. Watch here. Watch. And there he went into a cave and spent the night in the place. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? Now notice, who said that? The word of the Lord said to him, what are you doing here? The word of the Lord, right? But now read 12 and 13. After the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after a fire, a still vo small voice. And it was when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in the mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. Then suddenly a voice came to him and said, what are you doing here, Elijah? Folks, is it a coincidence that in verse 9, it's the word of the Lord who said, what are you doing here, Elijah? But then in verse 13, it's the voice of the Lord who said, what are you doing here, Elijah? Because the word of God is the voice of God. The voice of God is the word of God. And you'll find God in his word, in his voice, meaning Jesus Christ. So notice the voice speaks. Notice the voice speaks. The voice came to him and said, God's voice is not simply his audible voice. God's voice is a person distinct from him, who's his word, who speaks on behalf of God. Exactly, Vince Veritas. June, don't jump ahead. You're jumping too far ahead in Daniel 325 because if you don't know how to make your case, you're going to get embarrassed. Just be patient, June. Don't impress me with your knowledge. You want me there? Did you catch it? The voice can speak. The voice came to him and said. And that voice who came to him said is the word of God who came to him and said. So who came to Elijah? Who spoke to Elijah? Who revealed God to Elijah? The word of the Lord, who's the voice of the Lord, who's a person who speaks to God's prophets. <whistles> My goodness, what a makers. What do you make? Oh, man, what do you make? You getting it? Are you getting it or no? What the heck was that? Oh, my goodness, these idiots. Okay. All right. Before I'm going to give you a few more examples, and we're going to go to Proverbs 30. A few more examples, we're going to go to Proverbs 30. But you guys got to make sure you're getting it. Okay. Now, so is it clear the voice is not simply God's audible voice, like hearing the Father speak? In these contexts, the voice is a person distinct from God who's called the Word of God who appears and he speaks, the voice speaks, the word speaks. Yes, flamboyant peg. Of course, the son does nothing apart from the father. Okay, I just want it to sink in because I'm going to give you another example. Guys, I'm going to give you another example. But you got to now hear me out clearly. Hear me out. 
the prophet Samuel was entrusted. Thank you, John. God bless you. The prophet Samuel was entrusted to the temple under the care of Eli, the high priest. Okay, guys, if you don't get this point, then you're not going to make the connection. The prophet Samuel was entrusted to the care of the temple. At that time, it was the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, right? Under the care of Eli, the high priest. Okay. Part of his training with Eli, the high priest, he'd be taught the written word of God, the law of Moses. And he'd be instructed how to serve in the temple according to the law of Moses. Now, pay attention here. So Samuel would know the, the word of God in written form. The law of Moses, the written law. So he knew the word. And he would know of God. He would know this tabernacle is built for Jehovah, the God of my ancestors. And this written word reveals Jehovah. See, he knew of Jehovah and he knew the written word, right? He knew of Jehovah and he knew the written word, right? You with me so far? Okay, because here's where you should see Jesus again. And I'm going to and I'm going to bring it to a New Testament passage, First Samuel chapter three verses one to five. I'm going to give you a couple more examples, and we're going to go into Proverbs thirty. First Samuel chapter three verses one to five. What did Mary read with me? Now the boy Samuel ministered. See, notice he ministered. He was a servant of Jehovah before Eli, and the word of Jehovah was rare in those days. There was no widespread revelation. Now notice, the word of the Lord did not appear often. Notice, rare in those days. It's not talking about the written word. He had the written word. He had the law of Moses and Joshua. But the word of the Lord rarely appeared in those days and revealed God. Notice verse 1. Rare. Wasn't common because God was upset with his people. Now watch here. God was upset with his people. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was lying down in his place and when his eyes had begun to grow so dim that he could not see. And before the lamp of God went out in the tabernacle of the Lord. So notice, he's in the tabernacle, and he knows the God of the tabernacle is the Lord Jehovah, the God of his ancestors. He knows the law of Moses. He knows all that, right? But pay attention. Pay attention, man. Guys, please pay attention. Went out in the tabernacle of the Lord where the ark of God was. And while Samuel was lying down, that the Lord called Samuel, and he said, Here I am. So he ran to Eli and said, Here, I'm, here I am. You called me. Pay attention now. Here I am, right? You called me. And he said, I did not call. Lie down again. And he went and lay down. So he thought it was Eli calling him. Now notice verses 6 and 7. Verses 6 to 7. Watch here. Then the Lord called yet again Samuel. So Samuel rose and went to Eli. And now notice this. Went to Eli. 6 and 7. I don't know why you rejected 7. All right? And he said, here I am, for you called me. He answered, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now notice verse 7. Notice verse 7. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, nor was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. What in the world can that mean? Wait, did he know this was the tabernacle of Jehovah? Did he know that Jehovah was the God of his ancestors? Did he know that Eli was the high priest of Jehovah? Did he know the written word of Jehovah, the law of Moses, and was instructed in it so he knew how to serve in the temple? So what does it mean he did not know the Lord Jehovah because the word of God, Jehovah, had not been revealed to him? He had the written word. He was studying the written word. So he knew the written word, and he knew that this is about Jehovah. You understand what you just read? He did not know Jehovah personally and intimately because the word of God had not come to make God known to him. It's talking about the need for Jesus to make God known to you so you can know God intimately and personally. Because apart from Jesus, you cannot know God. That's what you just read. Man, what do you make? Did you catch it? Let's read 1 Samuel 3, 7 more time. 1 Samuel 3, 7, one more time. Watch here. Exactly, Alan. And also John 1, 18. Now Samuel did not know the Lord. Why? Because the word of the Lord had yet been revealed to him. This confirms John 1, 18. John 1, 18. Exactly, Louisa. And this confirms John 1, 18. 
here's what John 118 says. Watch here. So you don't think I'm making it up. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten son who's in the bosom of the father has declared him. Did you see? Any time. That includes Samuel's time. Neither Moses nor Abraham nor Samuel could know God and comprehend God unless the only begotten son declared God to them. At any time in sacred history, no one could know who God is and what he's like unless the son revealed God to them. And that's what you just read in 1 Samuel 3, 6 to 7. That Samuel knew of God, knew the written word, but didn't know God truly and intimately until the word, Jesus Christ, in his pre existence came and made God known to him. My goodness. So let's go to 1 Samuel 3, 20 to 21. 1 Samuel 3, 20 to 21. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel had been established as a prophet of the Lord. Why? Then the Lord appeared again in Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Shiloh, Samuel and Shiloh, by the word of the Lord. Oh, my goodness. Now he knew God because the word of the Lord revealed God to him. That's John 1.18. For the Lord Jehovah revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord Jehovah. Oh, my goodness. That's the word that appeared to Jeremiah. That's the word who spoke to Elijah. That's the word that came to Zechariah. That's the word who comes to Abraham. Genesis 15, verses 1 to 3. Watch here. All of them. It's all throughout the Old Testament. All throughout the Old Testament. Genesis 15, verses 1 to 3. Read. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Oh, you guys, you're not catching it. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your exceeding great reward. Wait, wait. Who said that? The word of the Lord came to him. But let's read two, two and three. But Abram said, Lord God, wait, Abram. The, the word of the, the Lord the word of Jehovah comes to you, and you know this is Adonai Yehovah? You know that the word is your God? Yeah, that's who he is. I'm talking to the Lord God, but you're talking to the word of God. Yeah, the word of God is God, one one of them in essence. Oh, Abraham, so you're not a Unitarian. No, you're not Muslim. Oh, okay. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision saying, Do not be afraid, Abraham. I'm your shield, your exceeding, exceedingly great reward. But Abraham said, Lord God. Adonai Yahovah, what will you give me, seeing I go childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus? Then Abraham said, look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, one born in my house is my heir. Now watch here, though. Watch here. It's going to get better. It's going to get beauties. It's going to get beauties. And then we can go to Proverbs. I this. what happened here. All right. Hold on. Thank God for modern technology, guys. Thank God for modern technology. There you go. Guys, can you tell me if the word, the Hebrew says, uh, Lamer, the word of the Lord came to Abraham, Lamer? Can you see if the word Lamer is there, the Hebrew word Lamer? Can you guys check and see if I'm lying? Because, you know, I'm known to be a liar. Can you click and see, does it say the word of the Lord came to him, Lamer, saying, Speaking, talking. You see it? Are you guys going to get really blown away with this one? You're really going to get blown away with this one. Because wait, what I'm going to do with this. Oh, my goodness. Oh, man, I can't wait. Now, guys, here's what I need you to do. I really need you to pay attention to Genesis 15. Verses 4 to 6. You really need to pay attention. Because not only the word of the Lord came to him, but he came to him in human form. He came to him in visible form. Let's see if you get it. Genesis 15, verses 4 to 6. Pay attention. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, This one shall not be your heir, 
but one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. Now notice five. Guys, really pay attention to five. Then he brought him outside and said, if I have to show you where the word Lama is, you're going to be gone, 3K. Then he brought him outside and said, look now toward heaven and count the stars if you are able to number them. And he said to him, so shall your descendants be. One more time, guys. Pay attention to verse 5. Then he said, then he said, pay attention to 5. Then he said to him, right, this one shall not be your heir, but one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. Now notice 5. Then he brought him outside and said, wait, wait. If he brought him outside, that means he was inside with Abraham. So the word of the Lord not only spoke to Abraham, but appeared visibly in a specific location inside. And they lived in tents at that time. So here, the word entered the tent. He entered the tent, and he's speaking directly to Abraham. He says, come outside. Let me take you outside of the tent. Let me show you. Wait, the word of the Lord appeared visibly in time and space, in creation, and a specific location inside a tent? Here, Genesis 15, verse 5. One more time. One more time. Arvin, whom to believe, your mother or your father, both of whom were dogs who gave birth to a beast like you. So please specify, which dog should I believe about you? Genesis 15, verse 5. Then he brought him outside. So he was inside. And he took him out and said, look now toward heaven and count the stars if you are able to number them. And he said to him, so shall your descendants be. Now, let's see verse 4. Hold on. I'm going to give you the link to verse 4 again. Okay. And you guys tell me if you see the word Lamar again, you're going to see. Wahinna davar yodhe vavhe ille lamar. Ille lamar. Here you go. Here it is. Click on it. Do you see the word Lamar there? Translator is L-E-M-O-R. And this guy, 3K, tell me where is it? Either he's blind or he's just wasting time. Do you guys see it? Yeah, Davar is the word word. Do you guys see it? 3K, if you don't find the word Lamar, I'm going to block you. You got five seconds to find it or you're out of here. Because I'm not going to play with your games anymore. Five, four, three, two, one. Did you find it? Even a blind man can see it. I'm tired of your games. Okay? You distracted me now, you distract me again. You didn't find them. Get out of here. Don't come back here, man. Okay. No, he didn't say okay. He said okay like okay. All right. Everyone else who's serious and listening, do you see the word Lamar? Do you guys see it? Okay. Why is it hard for someone to see the word? It's right there. A blind man can see it. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's right there. I see it. He doesn't even need Braille to see it. Okay. But for those of you paying attention, is it clear the word of the Lord is appearing again visibly? In time and space, at a specific location, exactly, even Stephen Wonder, and speaking audibly to Abraham. Is that clear? Did you see that? So who appeared to Abraham in Genesis 15? Who appeared to Abraham in Genesis 15? Who was it? That, what does the text say? Who was it? Was it the Father? The Word of the Lord. The Word of Jehovah. And according to New Testament, who is that word? The Father? No, Jesus Christ. So now notice what Genesis 15 verse 6 says. Now I'm going to tie in with the New Testament and get ready to be blown away. You're going to be, oh my goodness, you're kidding me. Genesis 15 verse 6. Genesis 15 verse 6. And he believed in the Lord Jehovah and he counted it to him for righteousness. Wow, did you catch it? Lamed means saying, penta. The word word in Hebrew is davar, davar. Petros, you don't like it, get out of here, get lost. You don't like it. No one told you to come here, buddy. Okay, did you catch it? He believed who in Genesis 15, verse 6? 
It says Jehovah. But which person of Jehovah? Who did he believe? And who then justified him for believing in him? What does the text say? Give me the language of the text. Who? The word of Jehovah. Did you catch it, folks? Abraham was declared righteous and credited to be righteous because he trusted in what Jesus told him. He trusted in what Jesus told him and believed what Jesus told him and didn't doubt what Jesus told him, but believed Jesus and trusted in Jesus that he would do as he said. And once he trusted in him, Jesus recognized him as being righteous in his sight. So now when they ask you, when they ask you, how was Abraham saved? He was saved by trusting in, believing in, loving Jesus Christ. It's right there. I gave it to you. And what does Paul quote to show that we are saved the way Abraham is saved? What does Paul quote to show that we are justified, declared, made righteous by trusting in Jesus? He quotes this passage. He quotes Genesis 15, verse 6. Let's go. Romans 4, verses 2 to 3, specifically verse 3. Okay. For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and was counted to him for righteousness. So wait, Paul, what are you telling me, Paul? You're saying we Christians who love the Trinity, worship Jesus, whether Catholic, Orthodox, Catholic. When we trust in Jesus Christ and believe in Jesus Christ and hope in Jesus Christ, we're declared righteous and made righteous and kept righteous. Yeah. You're telling me that's how Abraham was justified and saved? Yes. Abraham, when he trusted in Jesus, the word before he became flesh, was saved like you trust in that same word, Jesus, after he's become flesh. So who told you the Old Testament saints were saved by the law? Who told you that? Now you appreciate the words of Jesus when he said in John 8, 56, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. He saw it and was glad. John 8, 56 to 59. And then the Jews said, you're not yet 50 years old. You've seen Abraham? And Jesus says, yes, of course I've seen him. Because truly I say to you, before Abraham came into existence, I am. I've always been. I was there before Abraham was made. I was there when he was created. I sh showed up and appeared to him, and he saw me, and he believed in me, and he loved me, and he was glad to see me. And I'll remain forevermore. John 8, 56, 59. So Jesus told you, he saw me, and I saw him. And unlike you who want to kill me, when he saw me, he was glad. He rejoiced. He loved me. And he trusted in me and he hoped in me and I saw him and he saw me and he was my friend, unlike you. John 8, 56, 59. You got it? And folks, you know what's amazing? You know all this I just ta taught you? You know I have YouTube sessions on it? If you go to my YouTube channel, please do subscribe, hit the like button. I have series on how Abraham and Old Testament saints were saved. And I went through this, all of this. Now, let me explain to you what you just learned. I don't know what you mean in the flesh. You mean was Jesus an actual flesh and blood human being and had the nature of man in the Old Testament? Absolutely not, flamboyant peg. Absolutely not. Jesus only became an actual human being by nature and took on an actual human nature and became an actual human being when he entered the womb of his blessed mother. So are you saying to me, when Jesus appeared in the Old Testament, did he appear in human form? Did he appear as a man without actually being a man? Yes. Yep. Abraham was a Christian. Abraham was a Christian. How do I know? Because what is a Christian? A follower of Christ. Did Jesus not say Abraham was happy to see me and I saw him? He rejoiced to see me and I saw him? And you want me to show you where it says the gospel was preached to Abraham? You want me to show you where it says the gospel was preached to Abraham? 
Galatians chapter 3, verse 8, but we're going to read verses 7 to 9. Galatians chapter 3, verse 8, but we're going to read 7 to 9. Yep, a Christophany, I for Christ, one for Christ. Therefore know that only those who are of, of faith are sons of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand. Oh, so Abraham heard the gospel, saying, In you all the nations shall be blessed. So then those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. Oh, wow. So Abraham heard the gospel, believed in the gospel, saw Jesus Christ before he became man, saw the word of the Lord, the angel of the Lord, the same person, and loved the word of the Lord, the angel of the Lord, and trusted in the word of the Lord, the angel of the Lord, and hoped in him. And you want to convince me he's not a Christian. Thank you, Truth Seeker. Do you understand why, Truth Seeker, I get upset and I get frustrated and I get shut down when people are not studying this material because I've discussed this, man, and I'm not the only one. You see why sometimes I get sad? Guys, your Bible is gold. Your Bible is one of the greatest proofs God has given you. The God of the Bible is real. Jesus is alive. But you know why you don't see it? Because you don't know the Bible. The more you study the Bible, the more you're going to know this God of this book is real. This God of this book is alive. This God of this book truly exists. Yeah, well, re rewind Roman Catholic for about the 10 minutes and speed up and listen because you did miss a lot. No, it's okay. It's, you, know, you can ask. Don't worry about it. I try to stream, uh, stream once a day, Nicholas, as long as the Lord gives me the health and the holiness and the purity and provision to do this because of a full-time ministry, I'll be streaming at least once a day. Everything good is from the Holy Spirit and we're home. Give him the glory, the eternal spirit. Give him the glory, right, with the Father and the Son. And this is why I have such deep, passionate love for all my Trinitarian brothers and sisters. You know, whether Roman Catholic, Orthodox, I know some, I know some people won't recognize the Coptics, and Coptics won't recognize. I recognize them. They're Trinitarian and Nestorians, even though we're not Nestorians. I know Assyrians, that's what they call us. If you're Trinitarian and you worship the Triune God, and you believe Jesus is the God-man, and you believe his blessed mother conceived him and gave birth to him while as a virgin, no man touching her. He died for our sins and was raised physically and bodily, sits in throne physically and bodily, and will return physically and bodily to judge the living and dead and transform the earth. I am your servant for the sake of Jesus. I am your brother for the sake of Jesus. And I will come, if the Lord opens up the doors where we can travel, I will come to any of your churches and teach if you want me to. And I can even do it via stream. You can set up something and I'll do it. I am your brother, your servant for the sake of Jesus Christ. That's why I'm saying Gilgamesh, I'll do it. Why do you think I'm saying? You know what honor would be if the Assyrian churches, the church of my ancestors allowed me to come and teach this? I'll be there like this. Okay. So now that said, do you see clear proof, clear proof? The word of God is not simply the voice of the Father that you hear audibly. It can refer to that. Or the written commands of the Father, right? It can mean that. But here's a word in the Old Testament who is an actual living person who speaks and is spoken to, sent by God, who <clears throat> is identified as God, whom the people know is God appearing in visible form in front of them. And worship him as God. And that's the word that becomes Jesus Christ. Take care, Pedro. You'll hear the rest of it tomorrow, brother. And I'll be on the regular time, so it won't be too late. Sorry about that. Okay, everyone got that, right? Now, there, I've said this, and I'll say it again. The Jews before, during, and after John already knew this. The Jews already knew that God has this word as his messenger, as his angel, who is distinct from him, not a creature, whom God sends to speak to the prophets, commission them, and empower them, who happens to be God. The Jews already knew this. In other words, if there was a Jew reading John 1, 
Guys, pay attention. Christian Princess, how are you, sister? God bless you. I saw you, I think, on Discord. Was it? Yeah, it was you. Yeah, sorry. If, pay attention to this, guys. Pay attention. I hope you were here from the beginning because I want you to learn the faith too. Okay. If a Jew had read John 1, verses 1 to 13, you know what a Jew would have said? Amen. In the beginning was the Word. Amen, John. The Word was with God. Absolutely. And the Word was God. We know that, John. All things were made by the Word. Yes. In Him. Oh, yeah. You know where the Jew would be shocked? He wouldn't be shocked at verses 1 to 13. He'd amen that. He'd be shocked at verse 14. The Word became flesh. That's where they'd be shocked. They'll say, whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. Wait. Hold on, John. Time out. Up until this point, we know everything you said because we have it in the Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible. So we're with you. But you're saying he became flesh. The word became a flesh and blood human being? The word became a human being? The word was this divine person sent by God. Sergeant. They already knew that. That's what I just said. They knew him as the word. So, John, what are you trying to tell us? Who is this word that now became a human being? We know about the word, but now you're saying he's a human being. Which human being? Jesus of Nazareth. Whoa. Wait, wait, wait. You're saying the one who hung on a cross, naked, beaten to a bloody pulp, whipped to the point of death, spikes in his hands and his feet. That is the eternal word almighty of the Old Testament? Whom we handed over to be killed like a criminal? Yes, that's what you did. That's him. That's him. You got it? That's him. So, let me give you just one more example of the word so we can go to Proverbs 30. And Lord willing, I got to do part two and I got to finish Hebrews 1. I got to do part two and finish Hebrews 1. Okay. I got to do part two of this, God willing, because uh, my time's running out. It's called the lemon satu. Do you want to also know um, what soap I use, satu? You know, I love you, brother. I can tell you the soap I use and the mouthwash. So besides the lemon, I love you, man. <laughs> okay. Let me give you another one. Let's see if you're going to catch it. Are you guys going to catch this? Psalm 103, 20 to 21. Let's see who's going to catch it. Psalm 103, 20 to 21. It's okay, brother. I'm just playing with him. Satu is a regular. He's a dear brother in Christ. Exactly, Alex Gaskin. Their creator becoming fellows are to sit on King David's throne. Love it. Amen. Let's see if you caught it, guys. Psalm 103, 20 to 21. Let's see who caught, who's going to catch it. Bless the Lord, you as angels, you who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. Obeying the voice of his word. So God's word has a voice that the angels hear and obey. Bless the Lord, all you hosts, you ministers of his who do his pleasure. Psalm 103.20, one more time. Psalm 103.20, one more time. Bless the Lord Jehovah, you as angels, who excel in strength, who do his word. So that's his command, heeding the voice of his word. You carry out his command and you obey the voice of his word. The word when he speaks, you listen. The word when he commands, you listen. And you're blessed to do so. There you go. There you go. You got it? Okay, now with that as a background, let's talk about the point. Why did I bring this up? So you guys understand what I'm doing here. People ask me, where do we find the eternal Son of God in the Hebrew Bible? You find him everywhere. Yes, Gilgamesh, I used to. I used to preach at a Presbyterian, a Syrian church. I preached one time at the Church of the East. Yes, twice actually, twice at the Church of the East. Yeah. And I'll preach again if they want me to. Okay, now. Why did I spend this time unpacking this? Yeah. Because I'm asked, where do you find this eternal son of God in the Old Testament? You find him everywhere. He's all throughout the Old Testament, but under different names. Okay, now watch with me. Pay attention. 
The Son of God appears as the angel of the Lord. He's not a creature. I've already explained that in previous sessions. He appears as the word of the Lord. And I just gave you proof. I just gave you proof, the word of the Lord. And by the way, what does an angel do? But communicate a message. What does the word of the Lord do? Communicate God's word. In other words, the word of the Lord does what the angel of the Lord does. An angel communicates a message. The word communicates God's word. So the angel is the word. The word is the angel. It's one of the same divine person. So the Son of God appears as the angel of the Lord. He appears as the word of the Lord. He appears as the arm of the Lord. He appears as the captain of the Lord's army. Right? He appears as the Lord. So he appears all throughout the Old Testament under different names. But specifically, I'm asked. Here's what I'm asked. Specifically, this is what I'm asked. Where does he appear as the Son of God? With that title, Son of God. That's what I'm asked. In my study of the Old Testament, Jesus Christ doesn't often appear in the Hebrew Bible under the name the Son of God. Okay? There are two places. Man, I love Golden Corral, dude. They're closed too, Nashua. Why are you tempting me, man? I was look actually, ironically, I was looking to see if they're open. They're closed. Yeah, COVID-19. Allah, the snack book. All right. There are two places. Listen to me guys listen to me here there are two places that definitely refer to jesus as god's son two places two places that are explicit if you interpret them correctly so they're explicit if they're interpreted correctly because their proper interpretation shows this is jesus christ called the son of god only two i've looked throughout the old testament there's only two Proverbs 30, verse 4, and Daniel 3, verse 25. Now, part two, God willing, is Daniel 3, 25, because I won't have time to do it today. But we're going to look at Proverbs 30, verse 4. Thank you, Joshua. Proverbs 30, verse 4. Folks, do you remember the articles I gave you in the beginning? I gave you several articles on Proverbs 30, verse 4. You need to click on the articles, save them, study them. No, not Psalm 212, Gabriel. No, that's not. That's talking about him as the royal son of God, future. Let me repeat again. There are only two places that clearly refer to Jesus as the divine son of God, not as the future messianic son of God. Psalm 212 is about the messianic son of God, whom we know is God in the flesh, and you must worship him. But that's why I didn't go to Psalm 2. And Gabriel, that's, you know the debate with the rabbis. Nashkubar. Nashkubar is Aramaic. Does it mean kiss the sun or should we find a Hebrew meaning for it, meaning do homage in purity? Right? Not Proverbs 31, dude. Proverbs 30. Tom, you're still not getting it, guys. Now I'm going to shut down again. Tom, let's try this again. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2 is speaking of Jesus's crucifixion. Someone will tell you that there it's talking about him being the son of God in a different sense. Okay. Psalm 2, messianic son of God. Different sense. Let me repeat what I'm trying to prove so you guys don't bring up these passages that's going to backfire against you. Remember, I've done these debates and arguments. These are battle-tested arguments, arguments used in the spiritual battle, perfected by the Holy Spirit for the glory of Christ. I know what to quote, what not to quote. Psalm 2, you can't quote it because that's a messianic psalm, meaning a psalm about the human king of Israel. And Gabriel, if anyone knows, you should know if you're a messianic Jew, the debate with Psalm 2.12. Is it kiss the sun, Nashkubar, because Aramaic, or do you look for a Hebrew meaning so do homage and purity, right? So, Gabriel, you're not listening to me again, brother. Let me speak Swahili. Will Swahili help you? Let's try this again. The objection by the rabbis, Gabriel, is that Psalm 212, Nashkubar, can't be Aramaic because the chapter is Hebrew. Why would then David write in, he, in Aramaic, Nashkubar, kiss the sun? Especially when in Psalm 2.7, the word he uses for son is not bar, it's ben. Do I need to teach you this? That you claim to be a Messianic Jew. Do you understand the objection? 
So do you want to now get into a debate to prove that you're right? It is Aramaic. It's not Hebrew. Okay. Gabriel, you know I'm going to have to send you on your merry way, right? The word bar is son in Hebrew. Gabriel, now I, yeah, you're going to leave. I'm going to answer your question. It says nashku bar. Is bar the Hebrew word for son, Gabriel? Because I'm going to now get rid of you. You got to go. Is the word bar in verse 12 the Hebrew word for son or Aramaic? Okay, Gabriel, now I'm going to expose that you're a liar. You don't know Hebrew. Is the word in verse 12 ben or bar? See, guys, he's, he's, he's debating here, and he's an ignoramus. So why are you now debating me when I just told you Nashku Bar is Aramaic? Why are you debating me when you just agreed with me it's Aramaic? You see what happens when people want to impress me and show that they're intelligent and they know? They end up embarrassing themselves? Okay. Gabriel, one more time, and I'm going to have to muzzle you because you're a joke. In verse 12, the word son, is it bar or ben in Psalm 212? Sorry, guys. I got to teach these guys, these arrogant know-it-alls. They don't know it all. And they need to be humbled. Okay. Gabriel, you can't speak a lick of any language, you dirty scum dog. Don't block him. In verse 12, is it bar or ben? I know your mother taught you to be a filthy dog, scum, that you say, screw you. I know you're talking about what's happened to your mother, you filthy dog. Is it bar or ben? You wicked dog. I'm going to muzzle you now because you're a joke. And you claim to be a messianic Jew, you filthy dog. Don't ever insult messianic Jews. Is it bar in verse 12 or ben? Guys, hold on, guys. Let me, let me, let me muzzle this filthy dog. See, his spirit manifested, you see. Is it bar or ben, you wicked, filthy slime of the earth that disgraces your mother? In Psalm 2.12. Okay. Now let me embarrass this filthy dog who thinks he's a believer in Jesus, but he's a son of Satan. You filthy dog, you exposed your spirit. Praise the Lord Jesus for exposing dogs like you. Shame on your mother for giving birth to you, but may God have mercy on her. She didn't know you'd turn out to be this filthy dog. Now, guys, let me embarrass this dog who said he speaks five languages. He speaks five, I would have said. Go there, Psalm 212. Do you see it's the word bar? Do you see it's the word bar? No, guys, no. He's a dog. He doesn't speak a lick of any language. He doesn't even speak dog language, the language of his parents. See? I know you're calling your mother a kelp, uspista, but your mother's not here. Don't disgrace your mother, you filthy, rotten dog, you filth of Satan. You guys see it's bar, right? Okay. Now you get out of here, you wicked son of Satan. You're not a follower of Jesus. You're a filth of the devil, you wicked dog. Get him out of here. Slime. Disgrace to your mother. Your poor mother. She didn't know she's going to give a birth to a dog like you. Okay. Sorry, guys. You see, can I? Now, see, our weeks are, we will sing on the long, on the long. Now, now we can reject. See, praise the Lord. These filthy dogs come here to expose themselves. That's why, folks, let it be a lesson. Don't be impressed with people who pretend to know when they don't know. Been there, done that, got the T-shirt. Okay. Guys, if you click on it, do you see it's the word bar? You see, it's the word bar. I'm going to say now, been there, done that, got the T-shirt. Guys, don't come here trying to impress me with your knowledge. And don't come here pontificate because I will embarrass you. Been there, done that, got the I will expose you that you don't know the languages and you don't know the Bible and you're not a Christian. You wicked filth of the devil. You see? And I'm happy, guys. I'm not upset. People say, so you're, no, no, I'm actually happy because let it be a teaching moment for you guys. You know what you guys learn? Don't be intimidated by bullies who pretend to know the Bible, pretend to know the languages, and even say, I'm a Messianic Jew. No, you're not. You're the filth of the devil, you dirtbag. Okay? And you guys see here, guys, can you confirm it's Nashkubar? Nashkubar? No, no, no. 
wait, wait, wait. Sam, I don't see Jesus in you, Sam. I don't see love. I see anger and you make fun people. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. Guys, you got to love these sessions, don't you? You guys really must love these sessions. You don't get more real than this. All right. Why did I why did I scold this filth, this dog? Okay? Because he's using a passage that won't prove your case. Let's regroup, let's focus by the grace of Jesus Christ. Let's focus. Psalm 2 is not the psalm you go to to prove that God has a divine son. You don't believe me? I challenge you to go to any informed rabbi, quote Psalm 212, and watch how he makes you mincemeat. Mincemeat. Do you know why? They'll tell you, number one, this is talking about the king of Israel. Number two, the word there in 12 is bar, not ben. The Hebrew word for son is ben. The Hebrew word for son is ben. Okay. And that's used in Psalm 2.7. But in Psalm 2.12, it uses the word bar. And if depending on how you, you dot it, it can mean bor, right? Purity, okay? So an informed rabbi is going to school you. An informed rabbi, Umberto, is going to embarrass you. He's going to tell you, you mistranslated Psalm 2.12, kiss the sun, because the Hebrew word for sun is ben, not bar. That's Aramaic. And Psalm 2 is in Hebrew. So let me make it a teaching moment, okay? You're still learning. I'm not off topic. You're still learning. I hope you're still enjoying it learning. Here's the proof. In Psalm 2, verse 7, in Psalm 2, verse 7, guys, there it says, you are my son. Go see what the word son is. Bani, ben, bani, not bar, bari. Okay, you see it there? Guys, don't take my word for it. I'm trying to... Be used of the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit's pleased to use me to make you the best, sharpest evangelists, apologists, and scholars of the Bible for the glory of Jesus. And I want to save you from embarrassment. Okay, do you see that the Hebrew word for son is not bod, it's ben? It's bani, ben. You see it, right? Okay. But in Psalm 2.12, what was the word? Let's see what the word was in Psalm 2.12. Okay. It's bar. There you go. Go check it out. Here, guys. Thank you, Murray. God bless you. Thank you for the support. Thank you, all you super chatters and Patreon supporters. God bless you. I couldn't do this work without you standing with me prayerfully and financially. Okay, guys. Do you see it? It's bar. Thank you, Leroy. God bless you. Do you see it's bar, Luis and everyone else? See, I'm gonna. this is a teaching moment. It's not off topic. Thank God for that filth, that slime, that dog of the devil, because he's being used to educate you for the glory of Jesus Christ. Okay. The Hebrew word for son is ben. But in 12, it doesn't use ben. It uses bar. Okay, now, the question that you're going to be asked by the rabbis who hate Jesus why is it bar if David meant son? Why didn't he use the word ben like he used in Psalm 2.7? Bar is not the Hebrew word for son. That's Aramaic. And they'll tell you because it's not Aramaic here. It's Hebrew. And they try to find a Hebrew cognate for bar. And they'll tell you it's like bor, like purity. So it means do homage and purity. You get my point? They go, it's better to be rendered as bor, meaning purity, like do homage and purity, because it cannot be Aramaic because the entire psalm is Hebrew. Why would David all of a sudden introduce an Aramaic word when he's writing in Hebrew all throughout? You get my point? You understand the objection? So now, do you have time to explain the language and explain why he used Aramaic and spend all that unnecessary time and effort and energy on a passage that is debatable when you can go to the clear passages that are not debatable? 
You understand why I said don't use Psalm 2? You understand now why well, I said no? Psalm 2 is not going to prove your case because it's talking about the anointed king of Israel, the messianic son of God, not the divine son per se. And there's a debate with Psalm 212. You see, I'm trying to help you avoid using passages that are debatable in dispute because then your case is going to look very weak. Okay, so now with that said, glory to Jesus Christ, glory to the trying God. Okay, and by the way, isn't this proof that you know that I have done this? Can't you tell that I'm familiar with the objections? Because since God has called me to full-time ministry in 1999, I have engaged the other side to know what they're thinking so that these are arguments that are battle-tested and perfected by the Spirit for the glory of Christ. Do you see it, right? I'm not making it up. Are you seeing this? And so I'm helping you not to make the mistakes we made. I'm helping you not to make the mistakes we made so you don't embarrass yourselves. Okay. So, no, Psalm 2, you don't use it. You don't use, what was the other passage? Someone mentioned another passage. Psalm 2 and someone brought up another one. I said, no, don't use that one. What was the other passage that was brought up? I said, don't use it. I forgot anyway. Anyway, there was a second passage I do not use. It was Psalm 2. Oh, yeah, Wisdom of Solomon. Thank you, Tom. Why don't you use Wisdom of Solomon? Wisdom of Solomon for two reasons. Number one, Wisdom of Solomon, two reasons. Pay attention. I need you guys to pay attention. Two reasons. Okay. Yeah. You got this Muslim preaching Islam here and just sitting here not listening, just wants to talk about Muhammad, this filthy son of Satan, this dog of the devil. Wisdom of Solomon is about the crucifixion. Okay. So someone can tell you, this is not a reference to the divine nature of Christ, but the fact that being a righteous human servant of God, he is God's son in the sense of being the righteous one and close to God, and God adopts him as his child. That's how they'll tell you. That's number one. Number two, how many Jews accept wisdom of Solomon as canonical today? Today, if you're witnessing to Jews, they don't accept wisdom of Solomon. So you can quote that to fellow Christians who accept wisdom of Solomon, but not all Christians accept it. But if you're using it as an Old Testament proof, proof from the Old Testament, the divine sonship of Messiah or Jesus, no Jew accepts wisdom of Solomon today. Today, I'm not talking about in the past, right? We're talking about today, it's rejected. They don't accept it. So what I'm doing is giving you passages that even Jews will accept as authoritative and canonical. So let me repeat. There are only two passages where Jesus Christ is revealed as the divine son of God. Only two. Are we now back to the point? Only two. Everyone got it? Are we ready for the two? I'm going to focus on Proverbs 30 and God willing... Tomorrow I'll think I'll do on the one on Daniel 3. And then eventually I'll finish Hebrews 1. Only two. Only two. Okay. Proverbs 30, verses 3 and 4. Let's look at Proverbs 30, verses 3 and 4. Now, if you guys have been following in the past, and if you save these links, you learn all this. But if you follow in the past, you should know this already. I neither learn wisdom nor have knowledge of the Holy One. Now, verse 4, guys. Who has ascended to heaven or descended? Who has gathered the wind in his fist? Who has bound the waters in a garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name and what is his son's name if you know? There you go. Powerful passage. Because what Agur is saying, the author, let me break it down for you guys. The author is saying, I am unable to comprehend this God. I'm un unable to fully completely exhaustively know the nature of this God. Why? Because he does things that are beyond comprehension. After all, who can ascend and descend from heaven? Who controls the winds? Who controls the seas? Who establishes the earth and sustains it? 
Tell me what his name is and his son's name. Bam. Now, let me explain what it means by name. Here's where I need you to listen now. It's all in my articles. When a biblical author talks about name, he doesn't simply mean, what's your name, Tom or Joe or Stanley? Name in the Bible means the characteristics of a person, the nature of a person, the being of a person, as well as his authority. So basically what he's saying is, what is his nature like? And what is his son's nature like? Do you really know it? Can you comprehend it? To prove to you he's not saying, I don't know what God's name is. What is his name? That he knows what God's name is. Let's go to Proverbs 30, verses 7 to 9. He knows what God's name is. It's Yahweh. It's Jehovah. Proverbs 30, verses 7 to 9. Okay. Two things I request of you. Deprive me not before I die. Remove falsehood and lies from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food allotted to me. Now watch this. Verse 9. Lest I be full and deny and say, who is the Lord? Oh, so he knows his name is Jehovah. Who is the Lord? Or lest I, I be poor and steal and profane the name of my God. Oh, so he knows the name of his God is Jehovah. And by the name of my God means the slander, the character of my God. Okay, so when he says, what is his name and what is his son's name? Is he asking you to tell me what his proper name is? He just told you what his name is. Jehovah God. Yahweh, Yehovah, right? So then what does he mean? Let's go back to Proverbs 30, verse 4. What does he mean when he says, what is his name? What is his son's name? Watch here. Pay attention to the context. One more time. Who has ascended to heaven or descended? Who has gathered the wind in his fist? Who's, who controls the winds and the waves, the seas? Who has bound the waters in a garment? Who has established the ends of the earth? Who sustains the earth? Who established and sustains it? What is his name and what is his son's name, if you know? Now, let me again paraphrase. What is his nature like? Can you comprehend it? And can you comprehend the nature of his son? Tell me if you can. Understand the implication of this passage. God has a son who is incomprehensible like him, who can do what only God does, making the son beyond our ability to fully understand and know and comprehend in the same way that God is beyond our comprehension. You catch the implication of verse 4? Clearly, this son is incomprehensible like God and can do what God does. This son, like God, can ascend and descend. This son, like God, gathers the wind in his fists. This son, like God, has bound the waters in his garment. This son, like God, has established the ends of the earth. So this son, like God, is beyond comprehension. You cannot know him fully, completely, exhaustively. Impossible, because you're a human creature and cannot comprehend that which is incomprehensible. Now, some people will tell you it's not about what is his name and his son's name, Israel. It's not about Israel. You know why it can't be Israel? Some will get really desperate and say, it means you know God and his covenant people. Do you know why it can't be Israel? Because Israel cannot ascend and descend. Israel has not got, gathered the winds in, in her fist. Israel hasn't collected the waters in a garment. Israel has not established ends of the earth. That is desperate. When someone tells you it's Israel, you know they're desperate. You see? Because this son does what only God can do, which is why he's saying, I cannot comprehend the Holy One. Too much. When my finite mind tries to think and meditate on what God and His Son can do, I'm mind blown. I cannot understand it. Does everyone get the point why this is a powerful passage? Because notice, the Son already exists when this proverb is written. You get it? The Son already exists when the proverb is written. So it's not about some future Son. It's about a Son who exists right now. At the time of the writing, and he exists with God and can do what God does right now, not in the future. But someone already anticipated something else. Let me blow you guys away. Ah, someone already anticipated. It's all in my article. Let's go back to Proverbs 30, 
verse 3, because you don't see it in your English translation. I know of one translation that translates it as a plural. Okay, Proverbs 30, verse 3. Watch here. Neither learn wisdom nor have knowledge of the Holy One. Folks, don't take my word for it. Click on that link. The word Holy One, singular, it's Kadosh, but it's not singular. It's Kadoshim, plural. I have no knowledge of the Holy Ones, plural, Kadoshim. So even the language of Proverbs 30 shows that Agur is aware of at least two holy ones separate from creation beyond comprehension. And so Young's literal translation, there you go. He just gave you Young's literal translation. Nor have I learned wisdom, yet the knowledge of holy ones I know. But give us the new revised standard version, the new revised standard version. So Agur is aware there are two holy ones at least that I cannot fully understand and comprehend. Who are the two holy ones? God and his son. <whistles> New Revised Standard Version. I have not learned wisdom, nor have I knowledge of the holy ones. Oh, my goodness. Holy ones. My goodness. Who's not getting this? Because I'm going to have to wrap it up soon. And here is the link to the Hebrew. Don't take my word for it. You see, Kadosh is singular. Adosh. But here it's Adoshim, plural. Adoshim. Two divine powers. Bam. Are you guys now ready for me to tie it in with the New Testament so you can really be blown away tonight? So you stay up all night being blown away and not understanding? Mark Philippon, God willing, or Jesus willing, I will unpack Psalm 2. But not tonight. But now you know, Mark, why not to use it, right? You don't use that as a proof that Messiah is the eternal divine Son of God. Thank you, guys. Keep praying for me. I'm still going through trials. I need miraculous protection, miraculous deliverance for my daughters and I, that Jesus will bring them and plant me and preserve the blessings financially to use to stand my feet and to take care of my daughters for the glory of Jesus. Yep, he is. Isaiah 40, verses 13 and 14, Alex. Okay. Now, do you see it's plural, right? Kadoshim. You see it's plural, right? Adoshim, holy ones. So if someone tells you, well, the son is Israel, laugh at them. Laugh at them. Israel has ascended, descended to heaven. Serious? Israel has gathered the wind in their fist. Serious? Israel has gathered all the waters in their cloak. And they say, come on, man. That tells you how desperate you are that you don't want to admit what your Bible says in your face. Here in your face. There are holy ones, not just one holy one, and one of them is the Son of God who's incomprehensible like God. Live with it. Thank you, Angelique. God bless you. Live with it. Adrian, if you notice the translations we gave you, not all translations is holy one. Adrian, pay attention. We gave you Young's literal translation, Young's literal translation, and we gave you a new revised standard version. It translated as holy ones. Okay. Now, are you ready for me to tie in with Jesus? Notice, Adrian, New Revised Standard Version. I have not learned wisdom, nor have I knowledge of the Holy Ones. Young's Little Translation. I have not learned wisdom, nor have I knowledge of the Holy Ones. Holies. Okay. Are you ready now for me, for me to tie in with Jesus? Okay. Notice, the Son is a Holy One, separate and distinct from creation. That's what holy means, to be separate and distinct, transcendent over creation. The sun, like God, ascends and descends. Pay attention. The sun, like God, ascends and descends. The sun, like God, gathers the winds in his fist. The sun, like God, God, gathers all the waters in his cloak, meaning he's sovereign over the seas and the winds. And the sun, like God, establishes the ends of the earth, right? Are you ready now for me to tie it in with Jesus? Ascends and descends. Mark 1, 24. Holy ones. The sun is the holy one like the father is. Mark 1, 24. Here you go, guys. Get ready for the meat. Holy ones, saying, let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. The Holy One of God. Hmm. Who has ascended and descended? John 3.13. John 3.13. Oh, wait, I'm not done yet. Hold on. John 3, verse 13.
Who is ascended and descended from heaven? Proverbs 30, verse 4, right? No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is the Son of Man who is in heaven. Oh, my goodness. Here's the Son, the Holy One, who ascended and descended from heaven. Thank you, man. On a mission, God bless you. Did you catch it? You didn't catch it, right? Do me a favor, first and last. Thank you for serving us. Post Proverbs 30, verse 4, with John 3, 13, back to back, so that people can see it. Yes, that too. That too. Alan. Proverbs 30, verse 4, and John 3, 13, back to back. Pay attention, guys. Who is ascended to heaven or descended? No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is the Son of Man who is in heaven. Now, who is the Son of Man? John 3, 16. John 3, verse 16. John 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Oh, there he is. What is his name? What is his Son's name? The Son who, like God, ascends and descends. The Son who, like God, is a holy one. Not what is his name, meaning is his name Jesus. What is he like? Can you comprehend his nature? Can you know him as he is? Okay, Luisa. Oh, I'm almost done, but you can watch the rest of it later tomorrow. So don't worry. You're not going to miss out. It's going to be archived because I'm going to end it in about 10 minutes. So you're check back for the last two minutes, God, 10 minutes. God bless you. Ascend, descend. Remember, he says, I have no knowledge of the holy ones. I cannot comprehend them. I cannot fathom them. They're beyond comprehension. Okay, Matthew 11, 27. Matthew 11, 27. We're almost done. We're going to tie it in with Jesus, and we're done. And Lord willing, we'll do tomorrow, tomorrow part two, and then i got to finish Hebrews 1. My goodness, beautiful, right? All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father. I have no knowledge of the Holy Ones. I have no knowledge of the Holy Ones. And what did Jesus say? No one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and the one to whom the Son wills to reveal him. Jesus is answering Agur. You're right. You cannot know the Father or me as we are unless I reveal who we are to you. Oh, my goodness. It's like the New Testament is a commentary, an inspired commentary in Proverbs 30, verses 3 and 4. Remember it says, gather the fist in his winds. I'm sorry. Gather his fist in his winds. Gather the winds in his fist. He gathered the winds in his fist and the waters like a garment. What does that mean? He, it means that he controls the winds and the seas. The waters and the winds he controls, right? Mark 4, 35 to 41. Mark 4, 35 to 41. Mark 4, 35 to 41. On the same day, when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Now, when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was, and other little boats were also with him. And a great and a great wind, windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. Guys, pay attention. Who has gathered the winds in his fists? But he was in the stern asleep on a pillow, and they woke him and said, Teacher, said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Windstorm, great violent windstorm. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Who gathers the winds in his fists? Shh, be still, quiet. And the wind recognizes the voice of its creator. This is my creator commanding me. I better be still in his presence. And the wind sees, and there was a great calm. But he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And 41. 41. And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? Who has gathered the winds in his fist and the waters in his garment? God and his son. You guys caught it? God and his son. Romans 10, 6 to 7. Who has ascended but he who descended? Romans 10, 6 to 7.
Romans 10, verses 6 to 7. But the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. Do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down above. Who will ascend into heaven to bring Christ down? He already came down. You don't need to go up there find him. Or who will descend into the abyss? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. So here he is. He descended from heaven to the abyss and ascended from the abyss back to heaven. Glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Carolina. God, God bless you. Pray I collect these super chats to use it to, for ministry and for my children and I. For the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. Amazing, right? Okay, hold on. I'm not done yet. Ephesians 4, 7 to 10. I don't know what you what you asked me for what help. I don't know, Brian, what you're asking me. But I got you confused with Rodriguez. You're the Assyrian, who I thought was a Hispanic undercover Assyrian. Ephesians 4, 7 to 10. Guys, please pay attention. If you don't pay attention, you're not going to get this. And we're almost done. A couple more minutes. Okay. Guys, pay attention. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. So who has given us gifts? Who's given us these graces? Christ. Christ has given us graces and gifts to be used by the power of the Spirit for his glory. Now pay attention, though. Therefore, he says, Christ says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now this, he ascended. What does it mean? But that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth. So the Son descended from heaven to the lowest parts of the earth. And then what happened? What happened in verse 10? What happened in verse 10? He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. Did you guys catch it? Jesus Christ descended from heaven to the lower parts of the earth and then ascended from the lower parts of the earth far above all the heavens and now fills all things with his spiritual presence and his gifts and his graces. But this one is going to really blow you away and we're going to end it with this one. You thought... What I showed you was amazing. Oh, but you didn't catch it. Ephesians 4, 7 to 8. One more time. Ephesians 4, 7 to 8. Thank you, Riaz. God bless you, Lord. Okay, read with me. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. So notice it's Jesus. Guys, pay attention. Absolutely pay attention. This is Christ. Therefore, he says, notice quotation marks, because Paul is now quoting an Old Testament passage. When he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. So notice what Paul just said. The Old Testament spoke of Jesus ascending on high. You guys see it or no? Because I got to end it here. You guys seeing it or no? In Ephesians 4, 8, Paul quotes an Old Testament passage to speak about who? Who is the Old Testament passage speaking about that ascended on high and led captivity captive to give gifts to men? Who is this referring to? Who is the one who ascended on high to give gifts to men? According to Paul, who is it? Let's see if you caught it. Paul takes this Old Testament citation, applies it to who? Who do you apply it to? See, Ariel, you're not following me, brother. Paul took this Old Testament citation and he applied it to who? One more time, Ephesians 4, 7 to 8. I can't make the point if you're not making the connection. Ephesians 4, 7 to 8. One more time. Let's see if you catch it. I want everyone to catch it, even Christian Princess, because it's the first time I'm seeing her here. I want her to get it too. But to each one of us, grace was given. Grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. There it is, Christ. Therefore, he says, when he, who? Christ's gift ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. So who is the one who ascended on high, took captivity captive and gave gifts to men? Verse 7 tells you, Christ's gift. Any doubt it's Christ? Any doubt it's Christ? No doubt, right? Because if there is no doubt it's Christ, here's where you're going to know that Paul believes that Jesus is Jehovah in the flesh. You know why? Because Ephesians 4, 8, back to back with Psalm 68, 18. Ephesians 4, verse 8, back to back with Psalm 68, verse 18. This is where he's quoting from. He quoted Psalm 68, verse 14. 
Watch here. Watch what happens here. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now notice Psalm 68, 18. When the Almighty scattered Psalm 68, 18. Allah, a snack bar, Allah, a snack bar. Let's try this again, my friend. Ephesians 4, 8 with Psalm 68, 18. Allah, a snack bar, King Danny. So he's tired, this brother. Post it again. Ephesians 4, 8 with Psalm 68, 18. No, I didn't. You're lying, sir. We'll rewind it and you will still record it. Ephesians 4, 8, Psalm 68, 18. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. You have ascended on high. This is what Paul is quoting from. You have ascended on high. You have led captivity captive. You have received gifts from um, among men, even from the rebellious, that the Lord God might dwell there. Okay, I'm confused, guys. Psalm 68, 18. It's about Jehovah God ascending on high, taking captives captive, receiving gifts from men so that he can then bestow those gifts on others. It's about Jehovah God. Paul then applies that to Jesus physically ascending above the heavens. He applied this psalm about Jehovah God to Jesus. Why? Why did he do that? One more time. Sorry, first last. I know you're tired, brother, but thank you for serving us. May the Lord bless you. Psalm Notice it again, Ephesians 4, verse 8. Ephesians 4, verse 8, with Psalm 68, 18, one more time. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Notice where he's quoting from. You have ascended on high. You have, had, you have led captivity captive. You have received gifts among men, even from the rebellious, that the Lord God, Jehovah God, might dwell there. Paul Psalm 68, 18 is about Jehovah God ascending after taking captivity captive, receiving gifts from men to bestow it on others. Yes, it's about Jehovah God. Yes. But you just applied it to Jesus' physical ascension, return to the Father above all heavens. Yes. So Jesus fulfills Psalm 68, 18. Of course. How can he fulfill Psalm 68, 18 if Jesus isn't Jehovah God? Who told you he's not Jehovah God? But I thought he's the son of God. Yes, he's the son of God. So he's not the father. No. So he's not the father, but he is Jehovah God of Psalm 16, 18, who ascends on high. But then who's the father? Oh, he's Jehovah too. But there's only one Jehovah. Yes. That's why I'm a Trinitarian, Sam. Oh, I see. Okay, now icing on the cake. Icing on the cake. Now here's the icing. Dessert and we're done with the five meal course. Okay. Five course meal. Ephesians 4 verses 9 to 10. When Jesus ascended above all the heavens, he did what? Ephesians 4 verses 9 to 10. What did he do? What did he do? Now this, he ascended. What does it mean but the, that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth? That's what Jesus did. He first had to descend to ascend. But now notice verse 10. He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. So now Jesus ascended above the heavens to fill all creation, heavens and earth, with his spiritual presence, with his gifts, his favors, his blessings. So who's now filling the heavens and the earth with his presence, his spiritual presence? Who's now filling the heavens and the earth with his graces and gifts and blessings? Who? Who's doing it? Jesus, right? Christ, the one who descended to the lower parts of the earth. He's the one. Christ. But now, guys, let's put Ephesians 4.10 with Jeremiah 23, verses 23-24 back to back. Ephesians 4, verse 10, and Jeremiah 23, verses 23-24 to back to back. Ephesians 4.10, Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 23 to 24. Watch here. Who fills the heavens and the earth? Who fills all things? Jesus in Ephesians 4.10. He who descended is also the one who ascended far above the, of the heavens that he might fill all things. But now notice Ephesians, notice Jeremiah 23, 23-24. Holy Spirit, loosen my tongue and anoint me to glorify Christ. Jeremiah 23, 23-24. Am I a God near at hand, says the Lord Jehovah? 
and not a God afar off? Can anyone hide himself in secret places so I shall not see him, says Jehovah Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth, says the Lord, says Jehovah? So who fills heaven and earth? Jehovah. Paul, who fills heaven and earth? Jesus. But wait, Paul, you're a Pharisaic Jew. You know the Hebrew Bible. Yes. Paul, is there anyone besides Jehovah in the Hebrew Bible that fills heaven and earth? No one but Jehovah. Nobody else? No creature? No. Only Jehovah fills heaven and earth. But Paul, you just said that Jesus, when he physically descended, well, he wasn't physical. He came down to become physical from his mother to the lower parts of the earth. And that physical body he took from his mother, then he ascended back to where he descended from, above all heavens. And now he is filling heavens and earth, filling all creation with his spiritual presence, filling them with his blessings and graces and gifts. Yes, Jesus is doing that. But you just said no creature can do that. Only Jehovah can. Yes, that's what Jeremiah says. And you took Psalm 68, 18 about Jehovah God ascending after taking captivity captive, taking gifts from men to bestow it on others. And you apply it to Jesus. Yes. So you're telling me Jesus is the Jehovah who ascended after taking captivity cap captive to bestow gifts on men. Yes. And you're telling me Jesus is that Jehovah God who fills heaven and earth. Yes. So Jesus is Jehovah God in the flesh? Yes. And he's the son of God the Father? Yes. So he's not the Father? No. But the Father Jehovah too? Yes. But there's only one Jehovah? Absolutely. But that one Jehovah is not one person? No. Father, Son, along with the eternal spirit. We're done. We're done. So do you see why I said Proverbs 30 verses 3 and 4 is one of the most powerful proof texts that already in the Old Testament, the people of God knew by revelation that God has an eternal son who is just as much divine as God is, incomprehensible like God, and can do what only God can do. Because he is one with God in essence, his beloved son, who is divine, who then becomes the flesh and blood, Jesus Christ. You see why I said Proverbs 30, verses 3 and 4? If you properly interpret it and don't let people tap dance around it and, and run away from its implication or explain away who the Son is. So make sure you save those articles that I gave you. I gave you a series of articles in the beginning and first and last, God bless his heart, we'll put in the description box. Lord Jesus willing, Tomorrow I'll do part two. I'll delay Hebrews one for the next day. Lord Jesus willing, I will do part two on Daniel 3.25, the other powerful proof text that God has a divine son that was there in the Old Testament who becomes Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now, you know what's amazing about Daniel 3.25? Daniel also identifies that son of God as the angel of God. Let me whet your appetite for tomorrow, God willing. It's not going to be late. It's going to be way earlier. Let me whet your appetite. In Daniel 3, that son of God is identified as the angel of God. So the son of God is the angel of God who is the word of God who becomes Jesus Christ. God bless you. Now, folks, for every one of you, if you want to know the time, you need to go on my Facebook pages. For every one of you, Christian Princess, every one of you, if you're not on my Facebook page, Look for two accounts. I have two accounts. Sam Shamoon and Malik. Why? Because until I learn how to, what do they call it? Set up. What's the word I'm looking for? Anyway, until I learn how to do it, I usually announce on my Facebook pages. Here it is. These are my two accounts. When I'm about to go live. Right? When I'm about to go live. Yeah, I'm going to learn, God willing, this week how to schedule on YouTube my sessions in advance so you'll have advance notice. So I'll try to learn it. But until then, go on Facebook, every one of you. Renee, I don't even know if Renee's on my Facebook page because she's mysterious. But for every one of you, go on my Facebook, Sam Shamoon, Ben Malik. Friend request me. I'll add you, and then you're going to see. Because Lord willing, either... I'm going to do my live stream 
3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or after I finish with Al Fadi. Don't forget Al Fadi, Sierra International, C I R A. I'm going to be live streaming with them, God willing, at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So either I'm going to do before or after my session with Al Fadi, Lord Jesus running. Guys, bathe me in prayer, bathe my daughters in prayer that God will bring them to me. It's now been a year. I have not seen them or kissed them or hugged them for one year. June marks one year. I have not seen my daughters. Pray God will do a miracle and bring them to me. Break their mother to repent. Pray the Lord will make me holy and pure and righteous and in love with Jesus. A doer, not just someone who speaks the word, but lives it. Pray the Lord give me the health that I need to do this until God calls me home. And pray for the provision so I can continue to do the work of the Lord as long as he wants me to do it until he calls me home or returns in glory. So pray. I need a miracle, folks. Pray for miraculous favor with the locals here to favor me so I can stay put in Jesus' name. So I love you guys for the sake of Jesus. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again because he's alive. He can never die. He is almighty over creation. He's destroyed the power of sin, Satan, and death. May he cover us by his blood, seal us by his spirit, and fill us with his love. The eternal heart of the Father, the eternal Son of the Father, who became flesh, our great God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we love you. Help us to love you perfectly and obey you and save us and our loved ones, my case, my daughters, for your glory, Lord Jesus. Save us from Satan and his children. Save us from attacks and slander and make us holy unto your glory because we love you, Son of God. Bless this session and bring more people, Lord Jesus, and help us to become more like you. You are truly the Son of God, the virgin-born Son of Mary, the Son of David, and you are our Lord and our God, and we love you, we are in love with you, and we worship you, Son of God. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray in Jesus' name. Yeah, the Father, Son, and Spirit. Lord willing, see you tomorrow. You guys got my Facebook account? Here it goes. Sam Chamoon. Guys, friend requests me so you can be updated. And by the way, on my Facebook accounts, I also post links to my articles because I write for my blog and for Answering Islam. So every one of you, read this stuff, upload them, print them, and teach them for the glory of Jesus. Here goes my name. Sam Shimon and Ben Malik. Christ is risen, risen indeed. Well, CPI, uh, Christian Princess, I actually have people who started Facebooks in my honor. There's a Sam Shimon page. There is an Answering Islam page and Zachar and I running away from Sam Shimon. I manage all three, right? People started it and I took over just to make sure that the content was kosher and they didn't put stuff that was heretical and ascribed it to my name. And those guys disappeared. I wonder why. Surprise, David. Here, by the way, let me leave you with this. People know me for shaking my pecs. Be careful, Christian princess. I don't want you to pass out. Neither I, neither you, Zena, or Renee. Remember, Renee, Christian Mingle still kept many people single. Anyway, God bless you. Christ is risen, risen indeed.